Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on chart patterns and their interpretations. Now, I would appreciate it greatly if you could click on the subscribe button down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's very important that I increase my subscribers because I don't sell anything. I don't support anything. I don't get involved in anything. I'm not selling you anything. You're not registering for anything. You're just watching my videos. So if you click on the subscribe button, I won't bother you. YouTube will just send you a notification whenever I upload a new video. So please click on the subscribe button down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. So let's get on with chart patterns and interpretations. Now, technical analysis refers to the study of the financial markets based on the price move, on price movements. It uses the assumption that the price of an asset reflects all information about that asset, including market sentiment, as well as its perceived value. Charting refers to technical analysis that is performed through careful inspection of an asset's price for identification of well-known patterns that emerge in prices. For example, head and shoulders, channels, triangles, and wedges. Now, I am a triangles trader. That is one of my predominant ways of trading, combination of triangles, support and resistance, trend lines, price action, and some candlestick interpretation. And that's my entire strategy. But chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature and are based on the psychological phenomena that occur between the buyers and sellers of financial instruments in liquid markets. Well, that's a lot. Basically, patterns appear in charts and they've been doing so for many, many, many years. And the interpretations we apply from have been studied for a very long time. And the amazing thing is they work well for all asset types and in most time frames. The longer the pattern is taken to develop, the more reliable it is. The better the trend or the movement of the asset, the more, the more quality you have in that movement, the asset in that pattern, the more valuable your analysis will be. The pattern formations do not form a trading system, but rather provide indications like when they break key barriers like support and resistance. Like I said, I'm looking for a breakout of a, panel, of a channel or a wedge or any pattern right above or below support or resistance. And I can also use that support and resistance to figure out my risk reward ratios. Now there are many pattern types out there and they're all basically named according to the shapes. Now I lump a lot of them together. The general types of patterns include triangles, channels, wedges, and head and shoulders. Well, I take channels, triangles, and wedges and lump them all into one group that I call triangles, but they're not necessarily, remember when we went to school and we learned about triangles and we learned that we have, what we learned, I think the basics was the isosceles triangle, but you know, it was all based on the angular, uh, the angles of each side converging on, e on each other. And the three angles always formed 360 de degrees. And you had one that had a 90 degree and 90 degree and a 90 degree. And then you had others that, you know, were off kilter, but they all eventually formed these similar shapes and sizes. So as you see, we have in, in trading, we have symmetrical triangles, we have ascending triangles and descending triangles, all based on the angle of the layers of the the line, the trend line, or the support and resistance line we're using to build that triangle. Now, again, I lump them all together into what I call triangles. I don't ever look at whether it's a symmetrical triangle, a descending triangle, or a ascending triangle, because there's lots of rules that traders try to put to these that when you see an ascending triangle, it's a continuation pattern of the previous trend, and it gets you off kilter. Basically, we're always looking for only one thing, a breakout. Until that breakout occurs, we can't make any decisions. So we're looking to recognize a pattern and how and when to trade it. Now, there are specific variations of triangles that can occur, namely ascending and descending triangles. Now, we, once we see a triangle 
or a wedge or a flag, we can measure the base of that triangle and then take that width or the height of the base and drop that on the breakout point and that will give us our target price or how far at that breakout we can expect that asset to move. Now, this is a generally basic rule because you have to look at things. Do you have a major resistance level? Do you have an important price above it? Like if we see a triangle on gold and gold is at 1490, okay, and we see put the 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 weight the the width of the base above it and it shows us that it's going to should go up to 1520. Well, we know 1500 is a key psychological point. So we can't just say 1520 is our target. We have to go back and say, okay, 1500, because that is a very big difference. And next we come to volume. When in an ascending triangle, volume usually contracts. And what we're always doing is we're looking when assets move into the center of the triangle, the apex of this triangle, that volume is contracting. It's called the calm before the storm. Now, channels and rectangles. Actually, a rectangle could almost be defined as a double bottom or double top. I don't use them because I don't find them reliable because especially in online trading where we're trading in short-term time frame, this occurs all the time. Channels, again, are double bottoms and double tops, but in a downward angle. Okay. Again, I don't place much validity on them. And they're really kind of hard to see. They're really more like trend lines. And sometimes we call these flags and pennants. So a lot of times you'll hear people talking about a bullish flag or a bearish flag. And they're supposed to be channel up, channel down, continuation patterns or reversal patterns. Again, we don't want to get into that nitty gritty part of chart patterns. Then we go to the wedge. And as you notice, this wedge looks very much like a triangle. And so that's why I lump it into triangles. And I, I don't differentiate between an ascending, a descending, a symmetrical triangle, a wedge continuation, a wedge reversal. I see two angles, two angular lines moving towards an apex. I'm waiting for the breakout. So the most common wedge are found as breakouts in the opposite direction of the wedge. That is a bearish breakout in a rising wedge and a bullish breakout in a falling wedge. Except I've done a whole bunch of mathematical studies and I find this holds true 51 to 52% of the time and is wrong 48 or 49% of the time. Well, I can't follow a rule that doesn't give me an overwhelming edge. And then we have head and shoulders. Now we read about head and shoulders all the time. We hear about them. There's usually a lot of, often talked about in stock market. Okay. The fact is, I never can notice them. By the time I notice them on a, on a chart, they're already over and, and done. Okay. They do appear quite often, and there are fairly reliable patterns. And if you're a longer term swing trader, they are more important to you. Most of us who are CFD and Forex traders don't have the time to wait for this entire pattern to develop, and the markets can change very, very quickly. But the popular head and shoulders pattern is essentially a triple top pattern, except that instead of all peaks hitting the same resistance level, the head peaks slightly higher. Imagine it's just a person. You have a left shoulder, a right shoulder, a neck, and a head. Okay. Now, there's all kinds of rules about it, but I say a person can have a higher left shoulder than a right shoulder. They can have a longer neck or a shorter neck, but it still makes this peak and valley formation that looks like a person. And then we have, of course, the upside down head and shoulders. Now for head and shoulders, as well as all the other patterns, there are simple mathematical formulas to calculate our target price. So for head and shoulders, we take the target is equal to the neck minus the height of the head minus the neckline. And the target level is the neckline, which is your initial support, minus the pattern's headline. And you just put, drop these and chart the neckline is the neckline where the shoulders and the head are equal. And the target point, okay, the, the top of the head is your target point. 
and, and it's the difference between those. And then you take it when it breaks out of the shoulder and you drop that calculation of the neckline to the headline and drop that folder forward and a calculation and that will give you your target point. Now the multiple top charts patterns occur in an ongoing uptrend and indicate that the trend is nearing exhaustion. If the security repeatedly has a difficult time surpassing a certain price point, a multiple top pattern may form. It's double tops, double bottoms. Okay, I put no reliability in these at all. I don't even look at them. Now, if we come to triple tops and triple bottoms, that means that support or resistance level was hit three times in a row as the asset moved up, hit that resistance line, fell down, hit that support line, moved back up, hit the resistance. Well, you actually have a very good trading scenario. Okay, but again, double tops happen too often and don't really mean anything. But triple tops become a lot more reliable. So when you see price move up, hit this resistance line, come back down and get stopped at the support line, move back up to that resistance line, come back to that support. Especially at this point, you're able to initiate a trade with fairly good reliability. And again, we have the same calculation. We have the target point is the support line minus the head. Okay, so the target level is the support level minus the pattern's height, the height of the distance between the support and resistance line dropped on above whether it broke out above or below to set. Because remember, you have to be able to set a target point to be able to set your risk reward ratio. From there, we have to also calculate a stop loss and your stop loss should be set a couple points below support or resistance in the opposite direction. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to measure the quality of the pattern and the trend that precedes it. As we can see here in the, in the little diagram on the left, okay, this is a nice developed trend movement inside this wedge or triangle. Here we have this erratic movement. When we see this strong, beautiful, well-developed trend in this pattern, the signal it's going to give you and the tracing is going to be a lot more reliable, a lot stronger. When you have a pattern developing, but you have erratic movement inside there, because a trend doesn't have to be, the markets aren't always pretty. Okay. It lowers the quality of the signal. Now, in all, in all patterns, we're waiting for what we call the breakout. The pattern said they've broken out once it has crossed either the support or the resistance line. If the pattern broke out in the same direction as the preceding trends, it is called a continuation pattern. If the breakout is in the opposite direction, it's called the reversal pattern. So for example, a pattern described as a bullish reversal triangle would mean that is a bullish signal that is the breakout and the breakout was through the resistance line upward. Because it was a reversal pattern, that means the preceding trend was in the opposite direction as the breakout. That is, the preceding trend was bearish. So these are the predominant patterns we have. Wedges, triangles, pattern, uh, bullish patterns in a triangle, rising wedge, bearish rectangle, bearish pennant. And you can see that we can always, and all the patterns are the same. Stop loss slightly below the support or resistance line, depending on which way it's moving. Entry point after it breaks out, target point is the width of the base. And you'd be surprised if this actually works. So, thank you very much for joining us today and watch our more in-depth videos that cover triangles specifically and triangle trading. Thank you very much and have a great trading day.